You know, um, I received a wah pedal. I was playing in Japan, and um, uh, let's see, about seven months ago. Fortunate enough to have it for uh, some uh, Japanese gigs with uh, Mr. Ikiji Yazawa, and I love it. It's uh, so versatile, and I can dial up uh, so many different kind of wah tones that I grew up with. Um, it's very diverse with the um, Q ratio and the bass and the treble and the bias. And I don't know if you know it or not, but you've got some knobs on the side there to kind of tweak your tones. And uh, it's fascinating. I love it. You know, uh, with the controls, I'm always just kind of fishing around. Right now I have the bias about 2 o'clock, uh, the wah Q, and about 11 o'clock. My treble, let's say uh, 10 o'clock. <laughs> and my bass can it go anywhere from 12 to 1, depending. Uh, but it just, and that varies if I'm in the studio doing a session, uh, which I have brought this to the studio uh, a number of times. And um, my buddy's a producer, does a lot of film and TV stuff. He was very specific, he wanted a little more of a slash tone for something. So I had to kind of dial things to change it, and uh, I was getting a little more voxy, vintage wah sound. And uh, you know, with these controls, you can you can really dial up what you want. And for me, I'm a really simple creature, <laughs> high functioning chimpanzee. <laughs> and so I don't want to get into too much with manuals and all this. The thing about it is, you plug in, it sounds great. You can just put everything at 12 o'clock, great. You can fool around with it. You'll find all kinds of settings that. Uh, your preferences, and uh, it's easy to use. Yeah, so, you know, I had this pedal board built, and it was already under construction uh, just as I was receiving the wah. That's why it doesn't have a home on the board, but I have power just plugged right to it. Uh, what I like about it, though, is it's small enough you can put on a pedal board. It's, it's large enough for the foot to be comfortable, you know, let me turn it on. But it's, but it's smaller than your uh, traditional wah pedal, but it doesn't feel too small for the foot. So uh, for that purpose, I love it. And it's, it's really comfortable to turn on and off. Typically sitting down, I can't turn on a wah pedal if I had my old McCoy wah or these different ones. I gotta dig in a little bit. So it's nice that I can just easily Okay, so let me talk about my rig for a second. It was designed by a company, Free the Tone. And as you can see, I have a number of exotic pedals on here. I have the SP compressor, the EP booster, and over here I have the RC booster. Um, and all these pedals, with the exception of the RC booster, my delay and reverb, are not going through the effects, so they're going in the front of the amp. Um, and everything's working off a loop system. So basically, let me go to the direct mode and I can give you a quick run. <laughs> Tuning is optional. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so SP compressor. The amp is running pretty clean. Here's the sound without any anything. I'll talk in tune, talk in tune, talk in tune. It's part of our lives, it's what we do. Um, so, give you a little bit of. For me, it, it gives, the way I have the compressor set right now, it's given the guitar a nice top end, a bit of kick on the brightness, and uh, it's just compressing it ever so slightly. And 
and sometimes I'll bump that up a little bit depending on what I want to have. The interesting thing about the SP compressor, you might not be able to see this here, but you have a three-way switch. This is mid, low, and high. And then you've got a volume and a blend. So you can blend how much of the dry signal and how much of the compressed signal. So for me, I like to feel compression more than I hear it. If I was doing a, a session and I'm playing, you know, some sort of a 70s funk Nile Rodgers thing, I might want to squash it more and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the, the James Brown funk kind of thing. But for my playing, I just want to, I want to feel it more than I want to hear it. And what's interesting is over the period of time, you know, you get like 150 pedals in your room and you're trying things out and you're trying combinations. Um, I found interesting enough, uh, the EP and the SP work really wonderful together. So I can add the EP booster into this. So we're slowly kind of getting more dynamic range and a little fatter. Without them. The interesting thing about the EP booster is that it it's hard to want to turn it off once you have it on. It works really well with other pedals. If you have a certain distortion pedal on and you turn the EP booster on, it just fattens it up so nice, you know. It's hard to uh it's hard to not use it. Yeah, so all the pedals that go in front of the amp, and right now you just have these two on. Well, actually, I have the RC booster on uh, right now. The way I'm using it is I'm using it through the effects loop of the Marshall. And uh, it fattens and warms up the tone. And um, I, can, I can, so you've got volume, bass, gain, and treble. Now, gain, it's not the gain like a... a serious overdrive fuzz pedal. It's very subtle in the way it works. And I've found that running it through the effects loop of the amp just warms it up really nice for solos for me. Uh, let me go to a, a lead tone here. Now without it, I was on the single coil. Hold on. So I sustain, I barely have any volume going. Uh, but without it, little mosquito-y, little thin on the top end. I couldn't play solos with that sound I'm hearing right there. It's not what I like. <laughs> but I turned it on and I backed the treble down a little bit. So I, I want my, I always want my lead tone to be darker than my rhythm tone, you know? I want my rhythm tone like Eddie Van Halen. I want my lead tone like Brian May. I want it darker and thicker. So the RP booster through the effects loop works really nice. More of a creamy tone without it. And also, I can crank it for, for solos. Let's say I'm backing a singer. I want to duck most of the time. Say I don't, I can't hear my solos loud enough. I don't want to go back to my amp and be fooling around with that, and everybody's ears get screwed up. And why is Coleman's guitar getting louder? All I got to do is just go to this, turn this up volume a little bit, and I boost my. You know, oops, sorry. I'm funny because I can't play and talk at the same time. I'm like, da, 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 da. So that's kind of uh, how I use that, and I can't live without it. Every rig I have, no matter if it's this amp or a twin or a AC30 I use, or I have a triple channel Bogner I use, I always have these on my pedal board. I can't live without them. Yeah, I'm going to do some uh, dates in Japan, uh, my own shows, I think starting June 20th in Osaka. 
And I'm just going to do, I think, like five or six shows on my own, a shorter tour this year. And then uh, I'm going to do some dates with Iki Jizawa, the legend, uh, November and December. And uh, that may change. He may add some summer shows as well, but we'll see. Uh, JeffColeman.com is the place to go, and that's K-O-L-L-M-A-N, not C-O-L-E-M-A-N, like the Coleman stove. Uh, and yeah, you get all the uh, touring information. For that. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been releasing records for since 1984. <laughs> I have like 20 records out, so you can buy all that stuff, merchandise and CDs and DVDs and all that sort of thing.